Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another Theme Park Obsession video. My name is Dylan and thank you so much for tuning back into the channel. Today I'm hanging out at the Disneyland Resort to give you a few updates from both parks and downtown Disney and mainly just to hang out and enjoy the vibes. So how about you and I dive right in. Made it to the parking structure, the most magical parking structure on earth. Parking structures, there's more than one. But this is the first attraction of the day and probably my only attraction because the park is extremely busy for spring break and I'm not expecting to go on much of anything. But hey, I'll take the tram, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take it as an attraction. I don't have to get an individual lightning lane for it or get a boarding group or anything like that. This, this is easy. And I don't know if I'm tripping or not, but the uh, the blue is definitely toned down in here. I feel like it, it's not as blue in this section. It's a little bit darker in this area. I don't know. And after a very intense tram ride, I've made it to the Esplanade safely. Yeah, that was a crazy ride. I rode the back seat on that one. And you know how the back seats get. You can get wild. I was gonna start with California Adventure first, but you know what? I'm gonna head over to Disneyland because since it's still light out and the sun sets in about an hour and a half, I wanted to check up on Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I wanted to see if they install any more artificial uh, foliage to the uh, facade. And after that, maybe we can make our way back to the front entrance and then head over to California Adventure. And maybe along the way, I'll ride a couple rides and try a couple snacks or I don't know something. It's just gonna be one of those slightly update videos slash just having a good time. And look, this is a rare sight. It's because the parade's going, so not too many people are walking in and out the tunnel here. Okay guys, let's prepare for battle. Pull out your swords, cut out your shields. Let's do this. Okay, I survived. I made it through Main Street and trekked my way through the jungle of Adventureland and made it to New Orleans Square here to our Rivers of America. I know the people screaming in the background are proud of me for making it through the jungles and on Main Street with that parade. It is pretty intense. And look at this, here's your latest look at what's going on here at Tom Sawyer's Island. Presumably for Phantasmic that premieres this May, so not that long from now. It's pretty exciting. Now, a lot of you down in the comments are gonna have to help me out because I have no idea what all of that is in the water. I'm thinking, just like in the last video, I'm thinking this is all for the fountain infrastructure that is below the water line there. But what's interesting is it's only on this side of Tom Sawyer's Island. It's not on that side. So I'm wondering if they're just gonna do this first and then move over to the other side in a little bit. But again, the show starts here very, very soon and just, what, about two months from now? But like always, I'll keep everyone updated. I'll be keeping a close eye on this section of the park week by week because, yeah, I'm very curious to see if any big changes happen to the island before the show premieres. Oh, look at this. The wall is moving. There's, there's not a cutout anymore. Now here is your beautiful golden hour look at Tiana's Bayou Adventure opening up later on this year. You can see very closely that even more greenery has shown up on the Salt Dome, which is cool. That means they're slowly but surely working their way all the way down to the bottom. And then looking towards the left-hand side of the Salt Dome, you can see a lot of heavy work happening on the second lift hill. That barn structure has been completely torn up. So it looks to be getting a new roof, some insulation, all that kind of fun stuff. And hey, maybe even an animatronic or two are gonna be in there because just like the last version of this attraction, we had a one little tiny animatronic critter on that second lift hill. So hopefully uh, we'll get another one. And you can see in that spot that a lot of rock work still needs to be done. So in general, a lot of work that remains on the facade for this attraction. And a lot of you down in the comments have been wondering, well, why the heck did they start later on this one? And it's because it, it, there's not as much work to uh, be done on this version than the one in Florida. The one in Florida is significantly larger. The layout of that attraction is just like the one in Japan. It's, it's like twice the size of this. So it, it makes sense that they had to start that one earlier. I still wish they would have put the giant tree on top. That would have been so cool with the boat and everything. Talk about an, an elaborate facade. I wish they would have just spent the money and done it. And besides that, that's pretty much it as far as the facade goes. I'll peek around the corner to maybe look at the, you know, that, that big drop that goes into the, not a big drop, but it's a drop that goes into the show building. I'll peek around the corner over there because pretty soon Critter Country will be closing so they can finish up a lot of the work around here. And as far as the splashdown at the finale, there's Nothing that I can notice. This might just stay the same, to be honest. I don't think they're gonna really touch this area. And one more thing before I move on, they saw the Critter Country sign in the same spot, and I'm wondering if they're gonna move it at any point. Tiana, Tiana's is technically a part of Critter Country as well, but I think in the future, I, I, I don't know. I, I think they're just gonna make this New Orleans Square, like they're gonna extend this, which makes sense. I would think that would be a good idea down the line to just make all of this area of the park New Orleans Square. 
and this could just have an, a different aesthetic from like the cityscape that uh, is over by pirates. Now, obviously there isn't too much to see on this angle because of the scaffolding and the scrim, but they are putting in the insulation for that splashdown area. Now again, we don't know for sure if it's fully enclosed over there. I'm just assuming because that structure is completely new. And one more thing before we move on to the rest of the park and to California Adventure. Uh, a lot of uh, noticeable changes over here as far as the paint is concerned. They've been painting a lot in this corner and there's actually crews still on site today. So again, like I said in the last video, it looks like they're paying people some serious overtime to just really get this thing going. So six months is technically late 2024. That'll be up into September and October. So they don't really have too much time left. Okay, finished up with Critter Country and New Orleans Square. I want to head to Toontown because there's actually some major news happening over in Toontown, at least major for me because I've been covering it for a while and it just, it finally happened. Oh, we got the monorail coming. And of course, I always have to say hello to the Matterhorn, my favorite attraction of all time. Here comes monorail orange, heck yeah. Or monorail Mickey, whatever. Yeah, a lot of uh, other coaster enthusiasts have said like, oh, this is like your number one roller coaster. Well, technically it's number zero. So like, there's always like a legacy coaster, a coaster that got you started with, uh, you know, being a coaster enthusiast and all that. It's this one right here. This is the one that started it all. And it is technically coaster zero or my other number one. But my number one is a, a tie with Velocicoaster and Iron Gwazi. But this one, yeah, this, this is in a category of its own. Okay, I've officially made it to Toontown. I'm making the transition into Toontown. Here we go. Zoom, 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 bing, 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 bong, bong, tunes, tunes, tunes. Wow, look at how beautiful the sky is. It really does feel like we're in a cartoon. This is gorgeous. See, this is what's cool about Toontown. The Imagineers did a really good job of making everything really vibrant when they added the Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. I mean, it was already vibrant as it is, but with the addition of this, they went through the entire land and kind of boosted up the the color just a little bit. And also worth pointing out, you know, you gotta give it up to Mickey for being able to hold Minnie that long. Look at this, after 1800 years of construction, they finally opened the water play area right next to Donald's boat. You know, for a while, I thought they were building Pandora, the world of Avatar over here. And this texture on the ground is pretty fun. It looks like waves have washed up. And OMG, one more thing, look at this gorgeous sunset coming out of Toontown. In the distance, you got Galaxy's Edge. That is beautiful. And also enjoying this sunset with me, look who stumbled into Toontown, Spencer from Best Life and Beyond. Amazing. Oh yeah, that is... See the reflection? Oh, but, oh yeah. Oh, that is like epic. Yeah, that this sunset is amazing. Unreal. I'm oh yeah. I, I don't think I've ever seen a good sunset from Toontown no. in the last year, so that's really cool. This is, this is great. Okay, I decided to come back for good measure because Spencer is here and covering it on his channel. And look at this, the water's working. I got it the first time and the water wasn't working. I was like, ah, dang it. They took the walls down and it's not working, but no, it's working. And they have this really cool lighting effect on the ground too, so that's awesome. Yeah, it's a nice little place to play for the little ones, especially when the summer starts rolling around and it gets really hot. And if you're wondering where the light source is, it's right here in these little birdhouses. So that's a pretty creative way to hide the lighting for the ground. And yeah, if you're wondering, this is like a soft like pad. So if your little ones slip and fall, don't worry, they're not gonna bash their head open. It's, it's this, is a, this is very soft to the touch. Now, one more thing before we move on. If you look on the Donald's Duck Pond sign, like the safety sign, there's a little hidden Mickey on there. So that's a nice little touch. And look at this, as I'm leaving Toontown, there goes Pluto, heck yeah. Okay, that pretty much does it for Toontown. And pretty much all like the notable stuff over here at Disneyland. Might make my way over to California Adventure next. There's a few things to talk about over there, especially in Avengers Campus. Small World Mall, incredible sunset shot. Look at that. I see the sky is changing, like I was saying in Toontown. It's, you gotta like sit and enjoy it for a little bit because it's gonna really, especially with these like storm clouds. If there's like a bunch of scattered clouds and you get a sunset like this, oh, get ready. Buckle your seatbelt and pull on that yellow safety tab. See, and these sunsets remind me of Florida. Like every time I see this with the clouds, it's, yeah, it's Orlando. Okay, the sunset officially burned out and I think we're done with Disneyland. We're gonna head over to the other park. Okay, it is about 7.22 and yeah, it is still pretty stacked in the park. And they are gonna do fireworks tonight. Well, at least weather permitting. And it's pretty windy right now, so I don't know if they're gonna happen or not. You can see the flags up there are blowing. Oh yeah, there's California Adventure off in the distance and Carthay Circle peeking above the entrance turnstile. Made it in the park and uh-oh, looks like Oswald's Neon is having a moment. One cool thing about Oswald's is they still have this, the old school like Coca-Cola ice box. 
you can still grab a, a soda from it. And we've made it to Hollywood where, yeah, the neon on that sign will burn your eyeballs out. And even though we're in Hollywood land, I think we're gonna go see some superheroes. <laughs> Isn't that right? Because there's a bunch of crazy knickknacks and things going on over there. I heard something about a Cape Crusader. <laughs> Look at this, on the Hyperion Theater, they've actually fixed the, the signage. All of the popcorn lights are working. For a while there, a lot of the popcorn lights were not a poppin'. Okay, I've officially made it to Superhero Land, or Avengers Campus. And look at this. We have like some spaceship, it's, it's the Avengers spaceship flying above. It's not It's not the light from my camera lens, it's, it's the spaceship from Avengers. And like I always say, yeah, I don't really watch any of these movies, so I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to these superheroes. But when it comes to the attractions, I, I do enjoy the attractions. Like Guardians of the Galaxy is so much fun. Web Slingers is pretty cool for its technology. And I can't wait for the Avengers e-ticket attraction, which will eventually be over this wall over here. We don't know when they're gonna start construction, but there is an interesting development happening right in front of that car. And this fence has popped up just recently. Now, I don't know if this has anything to do with the Avengers e-ticket ride, but it might. It might be the start of, a, of some, you know, preliminary work, some precursors, so to say, before they start some major work. Because this is all supposed to be like the exit gift shop area and whatnot, so maybe they're getting ready to do something. You can tell these popped up just recently because Disney usually doesn't do the chain link fence thing. They'll usually put up a more permanent wall if they're gonna be doing something pretty elaborate. So this might have been like a last minute thing that they had to do. But yeah, this might be just some gardening or again, it could be some utilities, but the utilities could be involving the e-ticket attraction beyond the, the, the berm here. So I'll keep an eye on it every single week to see what happens. Very, very interesting stuff. Yeah, I really hope we get some information on the Avengers e-ticket attraction at the D23 Expo, which is happening on August 10th. That's when the official keynote presentation is happening for all of the parks and resorts stuff. Made my way to Cars Land, and I gotta say, every single time that I'm in Cars Land, I have to stop and enjoy the beautiful neon. It's so well done. Shout out to all the Imagineers and crew that put all this stuff together because they really did a very, very good job. And of course you can't forget the beautiful Cadillac range at night. My favorite, I think, is during Halloween when they do the different colors. They do green and purple. Oh yeah, I can't wait for the season. I'm counting down the days. Okay, look at this. Work walls have popped up near the Little Mermaid attraction. And watch out, Spencer. Pull out your shield. Pull out your shield. There's a lot of people. Yeah, this uh, seems to be some queue line work. You know, they have added lightning lane to this not too long ago, but maybe all of this is some lightning lane action. Maybe they're doing like a more permanent kind of structure, which makes sense because, yeah, the setup that they got right now is it doesn't, it's not Disney enough. You know, we need something more permanent, something that looks a little bit better. So this is probably what they're working on over here. And because it's food and wine festival, don't worry, they've altered the line to get your food. So you can just kind of go over here. This is a zigzag to this booth right in front of the Little Mermaid attraction. Okay, I've made it over here to the Paradise Gardens area to try a beverage. They didn't have this beverage the last time I was here for food and wine, so. I gotta try it. Uh, what kind of beer is that? This is a Perfect Day IPA. Perfect Day IPA, all right. And this one is like a peaches and cream uh, beer, so that definitely sparked my interest on that. So cheers, my friend. Cheers. Okay, this does taste like peaches and cream. Like, that is pretty awesome. And it's, it's subtle. It's not like incredibly sweet like a cider. Okay, for some more clarification, this is an ale. And it's uh, 5.0 on the Richter scale there, as far as the alcohol content is concerned. I gotta say though, even though the beer is very good, I still love that mimosa flight even better. I know, it's really good. And the real question is, would I get this beverage again? Yeah, honestly I would. And again, I'm not like the biggest beer fan, but this is good. I like the sweet stuff, and this does remind me of peaches and cream. Slowly making our way back onto Buena Vista Street. I think I'm gonna check up on some merchandise before we close it out. Okay, we are on the hunt for new merchandise because there's always something new here at the Disneyland Resort, always. Like, it seems like every single day they have something new. I don't think I've seen this sweatshirt before. I don't know if it's a spirit jersey. No, it's not a spirit jersey. But I actually don't mind that that text with the, with the kind of like the rainbow, the tie-dye kind of stuff on it. And for a hundred million dollars, you can team it up with the hat. It's actually $39.99 for that. And we got some new arrivals here. I don't know if I've shown these ears or not. I, I think I've shown the bag, the Lilo and Stitch bag or the Stitch bag. These ears, these are relatively new, the purple ears, very kind of basic, you know, simple. And like always, they have a bunch of lounge fly bags to choose from. Got a little Grogu down here. Ooh, look at this, another Stitch shirt. I actually like that, that's kind of cool. 
Uh, she's very soft too. That is, let's see, it's gonna be probably 400 grand. Uh, $59.99 for the shirt. Oh wow, check out this R2D2 uh, bag. Well, it's pretty heavy too. I'm gonna, my biceps worked for this thing. Dang. Loungefly R2D2 bag. How much is this? I mean, maybe a million? 75, okay. That's, that's actually pretty cool. Okay, I've found these. These are very hot right now on social media. The Disneyland D, very simple black bag. And yeah, you know, I could see why they're popular. The simplicity stuff, I, I dig it. So I would probably get this if I wanted to spend some cash cashola right now. Pretty nice, we got the Disneyland along the zipper there. And if you want a smaller bag, they got a fanny pack available. I actually really like this too. Again, same style, the Disneyland D in the front, Disneyland along the zippers, and then the little hidden Mickeys on the back. Okay, and for my fans of ears, we always gotta check up on the ears. See, I'm not noticing anything that's like popping out that's new that I can, I mean, again, I'm also really bad at the merchandise thing, but these are kind of cool, look at this. I don't remember these, these look new to me. There you go, you can wear these at Epcot. Oh, we got some more Grogu ears. These are really soft, by the way. A nice texture on them. And don't forget, they have a bunch of food and wine festival merchandise available, including this Spear jersey, the 2024 season. Please hold on to hats, glasses, or any loose items that could fall from the tram. If an article should fall, please stay seated until the next stop and inform the nearest cast member. Thank you. And just like that, I've made it back to the parking structure. Magical Disney day is officially done. That was fun. That was a fun little update video mixed with some chill vibes and yeah, just hanging out. Well, that was gonna do it for today's video from the Disneyland Resort. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and smash the thumbs up button. And if you're new to the channel and you love these videos from the Disneyland Resort or some of your other favorite theme parks because I cover a bunch of them, consider subscribing because I have brand new videos every single week that you won't wanna miss out on. Be sure to check out my Instagram account by following the link down below in the description. But until the next video, I hope you have a beautiful day, morning, evening, whatever it is. I'll see you next time in the parks. Bye.